Saturday, February 1st, 2020, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So trading, I'm going to talk about trading. I know a lot of you uh, do trade. A lot of you uh, maybe are thinking about trading. Some of you um, have not thought about trading. This video, of course, is not to encourage you to trade, but just to give you my experiences and what I think are the most important rules in trading. Uh, I started uh, trading uh, very small uh, option trades uh, back in the late 80s. Uh, but uh, one of the first rules uh, that I learned from one of my colleagues at the small uh, private bank that I worked in, uh, in Switzerland, in Geneva, I started out in Geneva, uh, back in the late 80s, uh, the first important rule that my uh, colleague uh, told me about, and he used to be a foreign exchange trader for a big bank, uh, and he came uh, to work for our firm. He was the, the guy who executed all the trades for the fund managers, and we used to um, train a little bit, uh, trading with him, especially foreign exchange. I was in the back office at the time, and he used to call me and the other two girls who worked in the back office maybe once every two weeks in the afternoon when it was quiet. We'd go and uh, start like a trading game for an exchange. Uh, and he told us, <laughs> before putting any trade on, you need to know what your objective is. So let's say you have $1,000 in your account and you put a trade on and uh, you pick an objective, where are you going to sell the position or close that position, and you need to stick to it. Um, and uh, <laughs> am I saying that I always followed that rule? No, of course I didn't. Uh, we're all human. It's very hard, uh, and I think that's the biggest pitfall, I think, in trading. You put a trade on, it works well, uh, let's say, for a few hours or a day, you're making good money uh, and uh, you hold on because you, you're you greedy. We're all greedy. You want more. You think, oh, this is it. This is the trade. And you hold on to it and then it turns and it, you start losing on your position. And then, and then you close it out and you lose. So that's why it's very important to have an objective and get out. Uh, I would say uh, psychologically... Uh, uh, the problem uh, when you put a trade on and uh, you're reluctant to get out is because you think, oh, this is the big trade. I'll never have another opportunity like this. But uh, being around for so long, I know there are a lot of opportunities. So that's the, uh, the other thing I like to talk about. So you've got to have an objective. The second thing is patience. Uh, and what does that mean uh, in terms of trading? Well, patience is once you do a trade and it's successful, if it's successful, of course, and you get out at your objective, uh, yeah, walk away from it a little bit. Don't try to put the next one on. And I've been a uh, victim of that uh, bad quality. Uh, you put a trade on, uh, you do well, you make a good profit on the trade, and you're thinking, oh, what am I going to do next? And then you just do something to do it. Instead of uh, just waiting and uh, watching the market, I think that's very important as well. The other point about trading, well, very important as well, is that it's a full-time business. Um, of course, I was a futures and options broker for 25 years. And uh, I executed trades for my clients. I could trade myself as well. Uh, it depended on the firms or banks that I worked for. They had different rules. Some banks actually didn't allow us to trade. Uh, so I couldn't trade a lot of uh, times. Some banks did, but you had to notify the uh, compliance officer before you put a trade on. Uh, so it wasn't as easy. And then some uh, brokers, they allowed you later on to... Uh, to trade uh, and you didn't have to tell them about it. So I do have the experience, of course, in trading. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a business. Uh, 
let's say uh, you work as a doctor or whatever, you have your profession, trying to trade full time is very difficult because I think uh, you need, you need, it's like a business. Uh, so you need to know uh, where the market is all the time, especially nowadays, markets are almost 24 seven, you got to pick um, your commodity or your currency or your precious metals. Uh, pick something that you, you follow a lot and stick to that. It's very difficult to follow different uh, stocks or sectors, I would say as well. Uh, in terms of books, let's go into some books. Uh, I think uh, this book here, uh, Jesse Livermore, World's Greatest Stock Trader by Richard Smitten. That's a very good book. Uh, Jesse Livermore, uh, <laughs> he didn't read any books. He started out, I think when he was 14, in the bucket shops uh, of that day. And uh, he just learned from watching other people, but uh, became very successful, of course. One of the most successful trades on Wa traders on Wall Street. Made millions, lost millions several times over. Um, it shows how tough it is trading, even for the best. One of the best advices from Jesse Livermore, in my opinion, is that you need to be a lone wolf when you're trading. And what does that mean? Uh, you got to be your own man or woman. It means that uh, you don't talk about your trading to other people. It means you don't ask people uh, their opinion uh, on the position that you just put on. And uh, again, <laughs> I haven't always followed that rule 100%. And a lot of people don't. They also like to brag about, oh, I made so much in this trade. Uh, I made so much in this trade. Uh, and they never talk about the trades they lose. So uh, I think that's the best advice. Keep it private. And I think the reason uh, for this rule, the lone wolf rule, is that uh, you don't want other pe people's opinion. You want it to be your decision. So you just stick to what you think. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, don't tell anyone about it. And I think that's a good rule. It shows how tough it is uh, trading. It's not easy. Uh, you need discipline, you need patience. And uh, yeah, and you need uh, also the important part that I would say is risk management, knowing how much uh, your capital, how much of your capital is at risk by putting on the trade that you are putting on. I would say I'm more of a conservative, uh, risk, fairly risk averse. So the leverage that I might use might not be uh, the same that you might wanna use, but you need to be aware of the leverage that you're using. Uh, some other books, uh, if you are uh, into technical analysis or if you're thinking of trading, uh, I guess technical analysis gives you uh, an idea of where uh, markets are going in the short term, medium term, long term. It helps you navigate through uh, the market moves. Some people are not into technical analysis. They just look at the price and they just uh, yeah get a feeling for a price action. But uh, technical analysis explained uh, by Martin Pring is a good book as well. Um, so I recommend that one. Uh, other people uh, look at fundamentals. Uh, they look at the uh, economic data, they look at the uh, data affecting maybe uh, commodities or currencies, and they uh, keep that on the back, back of their minds when they're trading. Um, the New Market Wizards, that's a very good uh, book as well. I think there's a The Market Wizards as well. I, I don't have that one. Um, but uh, Conversations with America's Top Traders, that's a very good one. And uh, why is it good? Well, because all the top traders, uh, they have different styles of trading. And uh, maybe uh, one of them... Uh, might suit you more uh, than others. So that's why I recommend this book 
The other way to, to uh, look at trading, in my opinion, is not to uh, think about the money that you're making, but about putting on a winning trade. And the money will come, of course. Uh, you shouldn't worry about, oh, I've made uh, such and such amount of dollars. I'll get out of the trade now. No, if you think the trade is going to keep doing well, stick to it. Another important tool I think you should use uh, when trading are stops. You can uh, use uh, stop losses or you can use stops to take profit. For example, you buy gold at 1600 market rallies to 1620 uh, You want to protect your profit. Uh, if the market drops to 1610 it triggers a stop. You get out at 1610 uh, and you've made your $10. They're also good uh, to use when you <laughs> need to get away uh, from trading and you, you can't be watching uh, the market. So it will uh, a stop will make sure that uh, your order is triggered. Stop loss, of course, uh, if you want to protect your capital as well and uh, you have like a, a limit of how much you can lose on each position. Let's say you buy gold at 1600 and uh, you put a stop loss uh, order, let's say at uh, 1590. So if it trades 1590, you get out, you've lost your $10, but you, you're not gonna lose any more. Uh, there is one a pitfall about stops that you need to uh, know though. Uh, when markets get very volatile and very hectic, uh, stops sometimes if you don't put a limit on your stop because you can put a, a stop uh, at 1690 and you tell your broker or your system that you want a limit of 1685 sometimes uh, when markets move very sharply you could put a, a stop at 1690 and only be be filled at 1680 so be careful uh, with that the other uh, point I would make as well is patience of course um, yes, you're not going to win on every trade, uh, and, uh, step away from it as well. If you, if you're in going through a bad patch, just step away for a week or two or, or a month. Uh, Jesse Livermore talks about that. A lot of times he went months, sometimes years without trading. He just went back when he felt he was ready mentally to uh, start trading again. So I hope this video uh, helps those who, who are just starting trading who, or who are thinking of trading or even those who are experienced in trading. Um, and uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, please share it far and wide. Uh, if you uh, haven't subscribed to the channel yet, think about subscribing. And uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, DTube, Facebook, Steemit, and BitChute. I wish you all a great weekend. Take care. Bye.